Okay, I'm finally getting around to doing a video on the compressor I'm using for my powder coating. Again, this is very DIY. I just started doing this about a little over a year ago. <clears throat> I really didn't know too much about it before I started. I'm working on my Jeep. There you go, 81 CJ7. Lots and lots of little parts that I wanted to sandblast and powder coat. It's I tried for about a year to you know sand things off, grind things off, all the little pieces, all the little brackets, everything like that, and it just took forever. And, it, and I would rattle cam paint the um, all the parts, and it just it took forever to do. It never came out as good as I wanted it to. So I finally made the plunge to you know get into some powder coating, <clears throat> and definitely a huge difference it's made in the amount of time that it takes to do things and uh, the ability to just take an old rusty part again you can watch some of the other videos and turn it into something that's much much nicer and it doesn't take very much time at all you sandblast it again there's i have a couple other videos and tons online that i watched before i even purchased any of this stuff and um it, it's just it, it's a game changer it really is but uh, what I wanted to get to is if you spend any time online or on Facebook or in some of the groups like that for powder coating, you get all the pro guys telling you, oh, you need a 60-gallon 60, 60 tank, you need this, you need that, uh, you can't do it. Yeah, if you want to make some money, you want to be running your shop eight hours a day, five days a week, <clears throat> by all means, uh, go ahead and you know purchase the investment. I'm sure it's worth it. But I'm doing you know little parts. So here's my booth. Just to show, here's, here's the kind of pieces that I'm doing. So this thing was totally rusty on the outside and the whatever powder coating was on it was peeling off and everything else. The same with all these parts that I've done. I've done probably 40 or 50 parts. And there's, a, I'm using a Harbor, Harbor Freight booth here. Again, this thing works fantastic. It's, I have a connector that I put in right in the back. Right back there, you can see that quick connect that I hook up and I have like a 20 foot uh, cable. It's obviously the red one here. So I went ahead and have, I got the whole setup, but again, what I wanted to focus on here is a little bit on the compressor. This is a Husky, I got a really good deal on it. It's a two stage and my understanding is a two stage and I haven't had a lot of compressors. I had a little pancake compressor before and that is definitely not going to cut it. You need some kind of volume. That's where the gallons come in. Because it has to be able to run, you have to be able to fill it up and run it for a while, and it will kick on. So essentially, you're going to set up your pressure gauges so that it, uh, I think this one I have it set, it automatically kicks off. Right now it's at zero, but that's the main pressure gauge. And that kicks off when it hits, I think it's at 150 um, pounds that it automatically um, shuts off at. Uh, but it keeps up with me pretty well. Again, it's only a quarter inch pipe um, going from here, hose uh, all the way through to the sandblasting. Sandblasting works great. I'm sure it would be much, much faster if you had a big pro setup. But again, this works great for what I'm doing. It'll kick on and it'll run. And I can obviously hear it running um, next to me while I'm working in the sandblasting cabinet and um, it, it keeps up with me. So I can sit there and I can run the, the blast cabinet for 30 minutes straight. Now, this thing has a duty cycle. Uh, I don't have all the specs on I think it's like 50% or something like that, meaning you're not supposed to, it's not supposed to be running. Um, it'll overheat, um, and I think it has an automatic shutoff for the heater. Uh, by the way, I am using just a quick reference this before I forget. So I have a shot vac and I imagine most of you do for running your, if you're going to have a, a powder coating booth, you have to have some kind of vacuum pulling the extra air out or else all your media or material is going to pool up everywhere and shoot around, you know, all the, all the different cracks and everything like that. You, you can imagine you have a ton of air going into the booth um, the sandblasting cabinet, but you need some way for it to come out. And the best way to do that is have some kind of shop vac or some other vacuum source pulling it out. And also what that does is it pulls out the, the, the kind of spent or the really spent media. If you're using glass bead, 
the glass just breaks down. It turns into dust and this thing collects it. Anyway, I digress. But the point being that this is set up with the exhaust. So this is the exhaust. So when I'm running the sandblasting cabinet and the compressor is running, I thought, well, I'm going to have exhaust on my, vac on my shop vac. Why don't I put it to good use and just feed it? Again, not super elegant, but I feed it right over where this thing gets really hot uh, after it's running a while. So I figure it cannot hurt and has, must help on some level to help dissipate that heat over it. So it's just a stream of, of air blowing over that. Um, you know, there, there's a fan back there and everything. You know, again, this is two stage that helps to cool it off. But I, I think that actually does a fair amount of help as well. Anyway. So back to the compressor, this thing is, you know, 30 gallons, 7.7, um, um, what is that, cubic, cubic feet per minute. Um, actually, I'm not sure what that is, <laughs> but up to 175 PSI, two horsepower. Again, if you're looking at um, the specs for something that will work for you in your home garage, then this is definitely it. Um, again, I got a good deal on this one. Also, I've heard that the, the two-stage is pretty quiet, and this thing, I'll run it here in just a second, and it's, it's really not too bad. I mean, I'm in an enclosed garage, the garage door is closed, um, and it's, it's not too bad. When I'm running this thing, I can be in the house, and I can barely hear it running out here in the garage. Again, this is a little away from the from the door that goes inside, but it's still um, pretty quiet. I mean, it's perfectly fine. I mean, especially when we're in the sandblasting cabinet and the shop vac in between, yeah, the shop vac and this, it's really not that loud. In fact, I want to go ahead and turn it on. You can just kind of see it. So I don't know if you can hear me very well, but you know I'm standing, you know, probably 10 feet away from it. You can carry on a conversation. Again, it's it's noisy, but I don't find it to be too loud in terms of when it's running. So that's what it sounds like, and then I get the in fact I can even turn on the shop back. So I just turned on the shop back. That's going, so that's about the volume that I have in here while I'm sandblasting. The sandblast cabinet makes a little bit of noise, but it's not really not too bad. But again, you really can't hear this inside at all. And again, yeah, you set this. So this is blowing out right here. Put it right on there. Air cool. Might as well take advantage of it. See? So it didn't really take that long for, let me see, pressure got up to, what was that, 60 about? I'm usually blasting at like 80 to 90, somewhere in there. Um, it came with this regulator here. It came with this one here and this one. And this is obviously, this is what's in the, um, in the tank and this is what it's coming out as. I wanted a water filter here too. Notice, and I'll put a link to this. Um, you, you want something there that's going to, you can already see the condensation. Also, there's a, underneath there, you can't see it, but way underneath is actually a pretty poor position because you can't even get your hand underneath the tires there. There's a, a little valve. You, you do need to uh, let the water out. I'll get maybe a quarter of a cup coming out of there. Um, I'll probably... Depending on how much I'm using it, I'll probably drain that um, 
I don't know, every couple weeks, something like that. It just depends on how much I'm using it. And like I said, I get a couple. So this one here, you can kind of see there, there is some liquid that comes out of there. You see the condensation. So I wanted to put it in there. It just came with an extra gauge. So um, I went ahead and just did that. This is in line. Again, there's a quick connect right here. And then also this here, there's some water. You can kind of see maybe initially when I pulled that, there's a little bit of water. So again, you want to get all the water out of here, make sure it doesn't go through your lines. But anyway, so um, yeah, the, again, this thing works great. It's a little scary when you're looking at it and you're going to be spending, I don't know, you got a bunch of money coming into you know, your compressor. I don't know what, I, I think this cost me like 300 bucks, 400, but I got a really good deal on it. So you may be in a little bit more than that. But this thing, if you decide you don't want to use it or whatever, a year down the road, you can get, I've been looking online a little bit, initially for used ones and the used ones, they're not that much less expensive. So you could probably put it back on Facebook and get, you know, a decent amount of your money back. So, I mean, it's, it's a fair investment. You need to kind of do your due diligence in terms of what you're going to be doing and how you're going to be using it with the compressor. Again, the um, this thing runs about 200, this cabinet. And, but if you, you know, you probably already have a shop vac and depending on what else you're doing with your booth, you can get really expensive or fancy with the booth. Again, you can watch my other videos. I got, I use, apparently I use cardboard a lot and I got the cabinet here, the oven, I mean, and this, this thing works fantastic and everything. But one quick thing I wanted to mention also while I'm looking at this stuff is when I was running the compressor, again, I don't have, I, this is just basically a, um, uh, a builder spec home. These are only 15 amp fuses and there's only one in the garage. So I'm kind of screwed with respect to electricity. The compressor does take a fair amount. And if I run the shop vac at full speed, sometimes it'll trip the breaker and then I got to go reset it. Something that I did, which actually has worked out really, really well is I went ahead and I'll go ahead and put a, um, I bought a variable speed fan controller and you can kind of see I have this set about halfway. I don't need the shop vac to run at maximum uh, the, the whole time that I'm running the, the cabinet. I have it running at half. So you can kind of see I have, here's the, here's the plug right here. And again, it unceremoniously goes up to here, plugs right in. So and it's set at variable. Again, it runs it at half speed and it actually works really well. Um, and it, I've never had it trip since I've done that. Because if you're running this thing by itself, it's just kind of interesting that. So if you want that thing, the, the vacuum running full blast, again, if you have a smaller shot vac or whatever, it probably takes a less, fewer amps. Um, but again, like I said, I only have one circuit running in the whole garage. Um, and this thing works really, really well for being able to manage having the shot vac on with a 15 amp fuse, because that's pretty standard, a 15 amp fuse and a compressor. Again, whatever compressor you get may be Bigger than this, smaller than this, you know, higher amperage, lower amperage, you may not have that issue, but that's one way that I used to solve it. Uh, again, I don't, I don't know where the sheet is that I have, but I just wanted to show what model number this compressor is. The compressor is a model C304H right there. And, you know, this is the, the setup guide. And um, not much to see there. Y'all, I mean, you'll have your own instructions, but anyways, 30 gallons works perfectly fine for sandblasting and it'll it'll definitely keep up if you use again i'm using a quarter inch um hose line and i i think that the pro guys use you know three eighths or half inch or whatever that is it blows a lot more air you blast the crap out of some even probably fresh uh, powder coating off of uh, stuff i'm dealing with rusty items Everything, you know, the paint and the powder coating that's been on them is all chipped and nasty. 
cracking uh, and it blows off there really easily. And then the surface rust that's on it, uh, even some of the, the deeper rust, again, it, it pulls right off of there when I'm running the, the sandblasting cabinet. So anyway, um, yep, yeah, not much more to say than this will definitely do it. Don't listen to, you know, some of those guys saying that you have to have something. I bet you could deal, I, I think there's 26 gallons, there's 22 gallons. 20 gallons, you're probably getting in a little bit of low range because uh, it probably has lower CFM. Um, but um, again, this is 30 gallons. This works perfectly fine.